question is, how did you get into photography? I know um, you've you've been you've, you've witnessed a lot of history between um, you know. We have as much meaning now as they did then, which is the idea of, of making the world a better, happier, nicer place. Um, and uh, when I make my prints and whatever I did, my publications is always with that in mind. I wanted to spread some goodness around, spread some happiness around. It. There was nothing I wasn't thinking about what I was going to do with it, what I was going to do for my career. Uh, nothing like that. It was just very pure pictures, 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 pictures. My love of pictures, really, and my my uh, insistence uh, is the word that comes to me. My internal insistence that they be good. But I started photography because I saw something. I was in the street in New York City, and I saw a, a beautiful building, and I wanted to say this. I wanted to say to somebody, "Look at that! Wow, isn't that beautiful?" Just a point, point. Here's my camera. Point that that out um, to someone. And I looked around to see if I knew anybody uh, on this, you know, around me in the street. I didn't know anybody, and I thought I should get a camera. And I just remember that moment uh, um, to. So that was the beginning was to show to show something really nice to people to someone mm -hmm. like that and, and that's how it started and then it segued into I was uh, segued into doing anti-war photographs to try and stop the war and then I bumped into um, um, rock and roll photography in in those years um, it's like the first time I photographed Bob Dylan for instance was for the cover of the Saving Post and that was quite interesting actually it was very very revelatory for me, where um, I was, um, um, I didn't know him at all, and the stories in my book, Woodstock Vision, but basically, I had never met him, and, and suddenly he comes out of the house and appears, and he's got a guitar, and he sits down on a tire in his front yard, and I start taking pictures without even barely two words, you know, mm -hmm. saying to each other, um, and, and I'm thinking, wow. And, and and he's actually playing and singing, you know, and I'm 10 feet away from him. And I'm thinking, well, here I am, 10 feet away from the most famous musician in the world and the one that everyone, at least of my generation, really wants to get near and and and, and how special this, this would be for so many people. And, and I'm, but it feels normal for me. I remember thinking that, but it just feels normal. It doesn't feel, I realized how special it was, how incredible, how unique and all that stuff on a cognitive basis. But my feeling was just, this is just something I'm doing in life, like that. And, and um, so I guess that was a pretty memorable. Um, and I'm curious, too, about uh, your app, the Landy Vision app. How does, yes. uh, what, can, what can you tell us about that? Uh, um, it, it lets the user synchronize music to video in a, a very quick and easy way and also manipulate the video at the same time. So the two synchronize with each other and work together in a way that's different than normal film does. But all I say is that normal film was developed technologically to tell stories um, and it, to show plays. So you, it, you you film a drama, you film people on the stage, you, or you, you show horses running down the street. It's good cognitive experience. Music is not that. Music is feeling. Music is not thinking. So every film that you see is about something. And the music is used to support what it's about. If it's a tense moment, the music is tense. If it's, if it's a documentary, the music is sad, the music is happy, or whatever it is. Music is used as, as a supporting member of the cast, rather. And what I've done is I really had reinvented the technology so that the music is an equal part of the pictures, and the pictures become part of the music, and the music become part of the pictures. I touched a little bit on, on COVID, and I'm wondering how that has affected your work. Has it affected your work? Has it affected your ability to produce? And uh, even with the app, is it something that has slowed down the, prog the progression with that at all? Yeah. At first, it, of course, our first, both my wife and I are 77 years old. And, and at first, the, the main thing was how do we stay safe? And how do we get food here? And how do we clean everything and wash it before we eat it and all that stuff? And I had to stop um, the people that were coming in. I had three people coming in. Uh, working for me, and the, and 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 that stopped immediately. Um, uh, uh, two of them still work for me, and the other one has a different job now. Um, and so, for a while, I was pretty paralyzed with uh, um, getting prints made. The order, actually, interestingly enough, that that um, 
people buying prints has 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 increased a little bit. Mm. In fact, the interest in is people staying home and appreciating their walls and saying, "Well, this is," you know, I, I don't know why exactly, but um, it, it's really gone up for me. And um, for a while, I wasn't able to make prints, and then finally, I have the one of my assistants who does the printing who runs the printer for me, uh, came in and, and she would then made the prints and she put them outside on a table in, in the yard and I'd go up and I'd look at them. And you talk about your experiences with Dugal over the years. Sure. I was very particular uh, about my images. As you know from what we're doing right now, we've, we've just done two prints. And I must have gone through six or seven proofs on, on these things. And for so I'll make a proof of, of, of the side of somebody's cheek, let's say, to make sure that that section is good. Um, and I was, always, and you were always able, Ken. I have to acknowledge that. I would, I would show you what I wanted and say, oh, just this, and and then you got it, you know. And that's what's great is to be able to talk, and then it appears on paper. I said, this is what I want, and then like that, it was there. You just sat down at your computer and you understood, you grasped, you you grokked. I don't know what the right word would be. Um, uh, uh, what I wanted, and that was really important. I spent a lot of time in my life getting the the uh, the tonality and the colors of prints uh, uh, co correct. So, well, thank you so much, Elliot. It was such it was a fun. pleasure to chat fun. with you, and um, you know, see your the greenness. I have yeah. I feel like I haven't <laughs> seen green for a while, so well, uh, it's been nice. <laughs> We'll take it in and you'll be with me. <laughs> well, um, okay. and Ken, thank you for being my co, um, my co interviewer. And, um, yeah, it was great. Elliot, mm -hmm. thanks again. And, yeah, thank um, you, Elliot. It's, it's neat to be able to spend a little bit of time with you, not in really a work related situation, just getting to talk. Oh, that's kind nice. of cool.